Good evening, people of Tableau, people of the internet, people of Alteryx, people of all data persuasions, if you will. I am Albert Bellamy, and this is, if I'm not mistaken, the final main content video of the 30-day Tableau desktop challenge. We have reached the end. We have we've stumbled through. We have uh, we've moseyed through we've had uh, kind of fits and starts and but we have come to the end and i am happy to announce that i have and i don't know about anybody else but i have passed the tableau desktop specialist certification so go me i've got plenty of adulation on linkedin you don't actually have to applaud i wouldn't hear it anyway um but yeah, so it is, I'm recording this Sunday night. My Cleveland Browns won today. I still got my t-shirt on from the game, so I am a happy man. Got to watch the game with my wife and son, so that was wonderful. Um, but yeah, so I took it, if you were following my content on link, LinkedIn, I took the test schedule for early Saturday morning, 7 o'clock. Um, I had a lot of things to do Saturday. Saturday was a full day. And uh, yeah, successful, successful attempt. A couple of snags with um, Pearson view and the interface. Maybe I'll talk about that. It's not terribly interesting, but um, yeah, a couple of things to talk about today, just so I don't get too parched. I've got um, polar raspberry lime seltzer. No alcohol, just fizzy water. Hmm, quite delicious. All right. So what are we going to talk about here today? Well, I want to tell you about, um, number one, I want to talk about what was the test like. Uh, there's definitely some things, even going through the, going through the course that I recommend you, you use to prepare, going through the study guide on the Tableau site. It doesn't do a great job of sort of preparing you for what the test is actually going to be like. The, the test questions, the quiz questions, and the test practice questions on the course are not the same. I did found, find one practice test on just through a web search. It was not affiliated with Tableau. It was just a free practice test. It was okay. Um, but I will talk about the format of the test questions. They're actually very similar to the Alteryx test questions. I found kind of funny. Um, but yeah, we'll talk about the test itself. One, I'm going to talk about my performance, like what, what I thought of my performance on the test, like the score that I got, you know, did, did I feel like it was, I passed comfortably. Um, we'll talk about the content on the test. Obviously, I'm not going to sit here and recite to you word for word test questions, even if I did remember them. But I'll go through the study guide from Tableau and talk through, hey, I found this to be stressed heavily. I found this to not, not be stressed as heavily, that sort of thing. Um, I'll, I'll talk about how I studied there, especially at the end. Um, if you've gone through my content, you know what I was doing throughout the month. But then last couple of days, I, I kind of got a little nervous because I was not finding time this past week to be consistent in my studying. And so it was a couple of days less, but I was like, yeah, I don't. I don't feel supremely confident about this. So I'll talk about how I kind of refreshed enough in my memory that I felt confident going into the test. Um, I can't read my own handwriting here. Oh, what do I need to do to improve? Uh, it was not a perfect test for me. There were definitely things that you know I need to trim up. So I'm going to talk about things that I want to do going forward to keep improving my Tableau skills. And then I'll talk about what's next. What's next for for me? What's next for the next challenge? What can you expect to see going forward? Um, you know, am, am I doing more things with regard to 30 day challenges? And we'll deal with all that. So yeah, let's start out. Um, what was the test like? And let me share my screen real quick. Um, Cause I'll, I'll talk through, there we go. That's not big enough. Yeah, that big me, me small. Um, so it was, I, I do recommend getting in there early. They talk about that in the sort of test prep. This is Tableau's website here, just talking about preparing for the test. I do recommend um, scheduling your test several days out because the test slots do fill up. 
Now, if you're a nut job like me and you want to do it at seven o'clock on a Saturday morning, you know, you can probably do that whenever. Um, but yeah, to get the time slot you want, schedule it a few days out, make sure you know, make sure you're prepared for that time. You can get in there into the test portal like a half hour early. I recommend doing that because there's some, there's some stuff to click through. There's some things to sign and whatnot. Um, but anyway, and you have to go through a couple of different portals. You have to go into Pearson view. You, there's a download. The proctor has to check your room. You have to like spin your laptop around to show them you haven't pasted cheat sheets to the wall or anything. Um, so I recommend allotting yourself a half hour for that. And I did that. So I, I was in there with plenty of time. Um, Exam outline, so the weights here. Looking at this, so it says connecting to and preparing data 23%, exploring and analyzing data 37%, sharing insights 25, understanding Tableau concepts 15. That last one I definitely see, understanding Tableau concepts was the kind of the lightest part of the test. It's kind of tough to say how, what questions actually were under that. And I'll, I'll go through the kind of the sub bullets here, but. Um, sharing insights, you know, is kind of outputting to uh, presentations and uh, making, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm drawing a blank here for a second, making stories, making dashboards. I didn't feel like that was a quarter of the test, really didn't. Uh, it definitely felt like less than that. It felt like the bulk, like the great majority of it was exploring and analyzing data, talking about the visualizations, what's required to build them and connecting to and preparing data really felt like it was more than a quarter of the test. It felt like these were each probably like 35% and then sharing insights and understanding concept, concepts were, were less, but I'll, I'll talk about that. So let's talk about like individual uh, segments here. Um, well, let me, let me keep it, kind of keep it on track here. So what, what was the test like? The questions were, um, there are all multiple choice. It is 45 questions. It says that in the study guide. So 45 questions, multiple choice. Um, you can mark questions for review and then go back to the review screen. It'll show you all the ones you've marked. I marked, I probably marked six or seven for review. When I went back, I didn't change any of them because my I kind of felt like my initial instincts were, were correct, or at least I couldn't bring anything to bear on it that would prompt me to change it. Um, so, but I'm not one that tends to kind of agonize over questions and change them anyway. I've learned through painful experience that that's just not a good thing to do, especially for me. So really it was just to kind of look at them again and see if I noticed anything about them, which, which I didn't. Um, so a lot of multiple choice, there's a lot of multiple answer on there. Unlike Alteryx, Alteryx multiple answer questions, there's always more than one, and there's always at least one wrong answer on there. The Tableau questions will tell you exactly how many answers, how many right answers there are. Pay, make sure you pay attention to that. When I took a practice test two or three times, and it was a slightly different format, but two or three times I forgot. And so I would give one right answer and then I would notice that it was asking for two answers. So just make sure it'll probably prompt you if you leave a blank, but just make sure that you, you do all of the answers. If you try to do extra, if it says there are two right answers and you try to click a third, it will give you an error message. I would imagine it'll probably prompt you before you submit the test. Like, Hey, question number 15, you, you only answered two and, and it needs three but I don't know that for sure. So just pay attention to that. Um, there were a lot, you, you can agonize over this test. Um, and, and I'll talk a little bit more about this later, but there is a ton of material on this test and for them to pick 45 questions from the couple of hundred really of kind of data points of things that you need to know on this test, they're really kind of cherry picking. And so, yeah, what I recommend is don't agonize over these questions. There were there were many times where I felt myself kind of getting sucked down a rabbit hole in a question, and I just said, okay, there were there were three things that I'd heard of. There was one option that I was like, I have no idea what that is. 
And so I kind of went through good test taking procedures. Like, can I eliminate any answer for certain? Generally, there's at least one where you're like, I know for a fact that D is the wrong answer. Cross that out. Okay, your percentage of chance of getting points just went up. And there is partial credit for some of these questions if there are multiple right answers. Um, and then look at it and say, is there any that I know for certain is right on multiple answers? Um, if not, just I would generally go with the thing that I had heard of. If there were answers where I was like, okay, I've never even heard of that thing. I don't remember ever seeing that in the study materials. Those ones, I would assume that that was a red herring. It was not a real thing. And so I would generally say it's better for me to, to choose the answer of the thing that I've heard of, the thing that sounds familiar, rather than kind of flipping a coin and saying, well, let me, of these three possible answers, let me pick one. Did it work? Did it not work? You don't get a, a by question review. Um, you just get a number score and a you passed or you failed. Um, so, you know, on any, was that a viable strategy? It felt like it, it has been in the past on tests where I've gotten a by answer response, but I, I just urge you to do that. Go through kind of logical steps. So you look at a question, the answer is not immediately obvious to you. Can you eliminate any, anything that's obviously wrong? Can you choose any one thing that's obviously right? If not kind of do the best you can narrow it down to potential answers and then say, which one resonates with me? Which, which thing have I heard of? And do I think has a potential to be the right answer? Pick that, move on with your life. Um, life's too short to sit there and agonize over the same. You only have an hour to take the test anyway. So wanted to talk about my performance on that test. I got, the score I got was 869. I did not feel supremely well prepared for the test. I definitely could have studied better. I could have been much more consistent throughout the month. Like I said, I, I did panic a little bit in that last few days and, you know, took some measures to, to try and get myself more ready. Um, but my performance was, was pretty much dead center. It takes a, it takes a score of 750 to pass. I got 869. So I'm kind of right in there in the, uh, in the C plus B minus range, I suppose, but you know, not, not close to failing, but definitely not close to a perfect score either. So I'm not, me personally, I'm not, I'm not that thrilled with my score. I, I definitely have things that, that I could have done better. Um, but I do feel like my approach was sound. And I feel like throughout the month, I didn't let the, that test prep take over my life. I didn't teach myself to the test. I was teaching myself Tableau and enabling myself to pass a certification, which was the approach that I wanted. I, I want to build skills in Tableau that are usable and not, you know, just pass a cert, hold up the piece of paper and then, you know, brain dump everything. So, um, so all of that was a success. I was more or less pleased with my performance. Let me go back to this. So connecting to and preparing data, like I said, I felt like this was a significant portion of the test, much more so than what it says in the, the statistical breakdown, um, creating live connections and extracts. The biggest thing here is knowing the difference between live connections and extracts. I never downloaded a Tableau desktop for this test it is not required. You can do all the prep for this test, I feel, and you can conduct the test. There's, there's no practical application. So you don't need Tableau desktop installed to do this test. You can do all of it with Tableau public. And I did. So I did not get with, um, with Tableau public, you cannot do a live connection. If everything you do is, is an extract. So you can't sit there and compare and contrast the two. That was the one thing where I had to just kind of take it on spec and study the class material and just pay attention to what is the difference between a live connection and an extract. Um, so there, there, I recall one or two questions about file types it says here, save metadata properties in a TDS. There was a question about, uh, what TWVX, the, the workbook files, um, creating a data source that uses multiple connections. There was a connect, there was a question about multiple connections, um, and, and about how to, how to rig that up. Um, 
creating and managing the data model, adding relationships to a data source, joins unions, when to use a join versus a relationship. Quite a few questions on this. And I anticipated that. Luckily, I focused in on that in my kind of last bit of prep. Highly recommend that you spend significant time figuring out joins, unions, um, what, you know, relationships, blends, how they work, when you would use them. That is stress. There are quite a few questions on that. Um, and then managing data properties, all of this in the, um, the, the data pane and the data input screen. So renaming a data field, assigning alias, Geographic role, I don't remember a question on that, um, but I do know that that was kind of an eligible area. I think that was on the practice test. Um, changing a data type, changing default properties, quite a few questions on all of those things that you can tweak in that, in that data input screen, um, the data source pane before you get into making visualizations. So I definitely spent quite a bit of time on that. I reviewed that, I went back, I'll talk about that. But that was something that I was very glad that I stressed that because I didn't feel like I knew that super well. Um, when I was doing the work, I was focusing much more on visualizations. So absolutely work on that data connections, data blends, changing data, all of that before you actually get into the viz. Okay. Domain two, exploring and analyzing data. Tons of stuff here. It does say in the study guide that this is the, the most heavily weighted part of the test. I definitely found that you will drive yourself crazy, absolutely insane, if you try and memorize this part. And I knew going in that that was a fool's errand. You do not want to try and memorize how many dimensions and measures are required to make a scatter plot or, or anything like that. I thought briefly about making a little grid and, and just kind of writing it out and kind of copying it a few times and just, you know, in the words of Stifler, uh, that just sounded like a lot of work. What I did when I was in the test and when I was in the practice test, what I realized was, and I recommend this Maven Analytics course here, and, and part of what the, the special magic of this course is, is, was, was, you get the muscle memory of going through and when it says, here's how you make a bar chart and you go through and you make a bar chart real quick, just super simple. And it says, here's how you make a line chart. And it tells you all of the characteristics and when it's best used and what's gonna automatically generate it. But you go through and you do it immediately afterwards. And I went through and I did that twice on that Maven course. That came in tremendously handy. Why? Because I didn't have to memorize jack squat. And that was perfect because I did not wanna spend the time required to memorize all that stuff. What happened was it said, hey, if you double click, and I can't remember what it was, but I remember a question on this on the first time when I failed the test and the second time when I passed the test. If you double click a continuous uh, continuous measure, let's just say for example, I don't, I don't remember what it was, but continuous measure, discrete dimension, something. If you double click a data uh, field of this type, what kind of graph is gonna pop up? I specifically remember having done that in the Maven analytics course. And so I had that muscle memory and I said, it's going to be a one of these basic charts. So that's why I highly recommend that Maven course. Many reasons. The Maven course, honestly, it, it touches on just about everything that was on the test. Um, I, I honestly can't remember a single thing that was on the test that I didn't at least hear mentioned in that Maven course. So they have really made an excellent course that teaches you how to use Tableau, but also hits all of the individual wickets of that test. Okay, so talk a bit more about that course in a little bit, but with these visualizations, my advice to you is do it once, do it twice, move on, and do some sort of spaced retention. Um, if you're doing a couple of weeks worth of study for this test, make make a histogram a couple of times, and a week later make make it again, and it's That'll hammer it home into your dome piece. All right. Stack bar, density map, all of these. Um, like I said, there's no practical application here. It is all multiple choice. It will talk about characteristics of these. What do you, what do you need 
to make these. Um, and it'll cherry pick a couple of them. Um, dual axis, combined axis, dual axis. A couple of questions on that. Um, so that it seems like that's fairly consistent. Having to add an axis to your chart. How does that happen? What's the, what are the ways that you can do that? Okay. A lot of the things in this section were multiple right answers. What are all the ways that you can um, that you can do this thing? What are all the ways that you can add an axis to your chart? Um, what are all the ways you can? Um, yeah, I can't. I, I'm not remembering specifics, but um, yeah, absolutely. So, organize data and applying filters. Applying filters within a visualization. Applying filters that are going to be seen on a dashboard. Um, applying analytics to a worksheet, stuff that you do in the analytics pane. It's going to talk about what is the best way to do this or what are the two ways to do this. And it will literally walk you through, like, go to the, go to the analytics drop down, select this option, select this option next. Next. Again, don't memorize these things. Do not. Do the things, do, you know, gain the muscle memory and you will remember, wait, how did I do that? And you'll be able to see it in your mind if you're, if you're anything like me. If you've done it two or three times in response to a prompt, you're going to be able to see it in your mind. I went to the analysis drop down. I, I clicked drop down. I, you know, I created a calculated field, I, you know, quick table calculation, something. Um, so this thing is stressed. That is a large, that is the plurality of the test right there, doing visualizations and things in that visualization pane. But don't memorize, folks just go go through it end to end and that reflects a ton of the things here in ultra learning which i'm going to talk a little bit more about in a different video um but you know do the thing that you're studying to do and for me the thing that i was studying to do was make visualizations in tableau not to pass a test all right so yeah multi-axis simple charts what is required for the charts i'm just reading my notes here um tableau generated fields big big point of stress i don't see that on here but yeah get get on that what what fields does tableau generate when you bring in when it has certain data when you have geographic data what are the automatically tableau generated fields when you have measures when you have dimensions tableau generated fields that that's a point of stress creating a calculated field absolutely um levels of aggregation i was a bit nervous about that because that's just something that i reviewed quite a few times and i was like yeah i don't know Multiple choice test. I like my chances when in practical application. With a multiple choice test, when it's asking me about levels of aggregation, I didn't feel confident. It was not heavily stressed that I found. Um, so when you start talking about like summing this or summing the product of these two things, or a lot of that, I you know I kind of beat my head against the wall a little bit studying and, and doing the course was not a big point of stress on the test. I get the feeling that's probably more for the data analyst test. But we will see that somewhere down the road. Okay, add a manual or computed sort, reference line. Didn't see that asked about in there. Quick table calculation, definitely. Uh, using bins and histograms, yep, saw that. Calculated field, when to use a parameter, display totals on a worksheet. I think that was on the practice test, but I don't remember seeing that on the main test. Okay. Um, so yeah, that part, and then sharing insights. Um, definitely a lot of stuff about the marks card, the shape, the sizes, how to how to tweak this and that. I didn't feel super confident about some of these questions um, because once again, I, I feel good about my ability to execute it in a practical application, but then trying to picture it in my mind's eye, especially when you're staring at a multiple choice question on a screen with a bunch of text. Picturing the, the drag and drop functionality of Tableau in my mind's eye was a bit of a challenge. And I started kind of questioning my own memory, like, wait, what is that? Is that the marks card or is that the shapes or is that the is that part of the, the drop down? Yeah, it, I, I started getting in my own head a little bit and I forced myself to push through. But yeah, changing the side, size of the marks didn't see much about legends on there, but doesn't mean it couldn't be on there on your test. Um, Configure viz animations. No idea. Didn't see that on there. Um, format marks as shapes for sure. Configure fonts. Eh, wasn't on my test, but could be, I suppose. Um, and then creating and modifying a dashboard. There were definitely questions about dashboards. It was not 
not a big point of stress. Another thing that I feel like is probably on the data analyst test a little bit more. Um, and then sharing a workbook, publishing, viewing and exporting underlying data, exporting to PowerPoint. I didn't see a single question on any of that. So I, th I think there was, like I said, there was one question about a file type, TWBX, and that was, that was it. Okay. And so the last one, the lightest one, understanding Tableau concepts. Let me give you a quick caveat with this. Yes. They say it's 15% of the test. Was that four, six questions? Six, maybe seven? It sounds about right. Here's the thing. If you understand the Tableau concepts, and I don't see uh, one thing I wanted to stress earlier that I didn't see, and I don't see it here, the physical and the logical layer for the data joins. That's a thing that messed with my mind a little bit. It's, it's on the test. There are questions there. Um, if you understand the conceptual things, what is, what is the physical and logical layer? What is a level of aggregation? What is happening when you modify the data in the data input screen? Um, you know, what actually changes the data source and what changes things just in Tableau? Understanding those concepts is crucial and it informs and gives context to every other question on the test. So even those questions that you study with, if you understand the concepts, you can often reason your way through a question. And especially this understanding dimensions and me measures. What color, uh, what color is a dimension or measure when it's discrete? What color is it when it's continuous? That's all in there. Um, explain what kind of information dimensions usually contain. So understanding dimensions and measures, understanding discrete and continuous fields, knowing that the two are not mutually exclusive. They're discrete and continuous dimensions. They're discrete and continuous measures. Dates, the, the bane of all data analysts, dates can be any of the four, which is pretty nuts when you think about that. But if you understand those differences, statistically, just what is that? What are some examples? What, what kind of graphs are they going to make? What kind of graphs are they best at making? Figure all that stuff out. Um, discrete fields, how they're displayed, discrete date parts and continuous date values. Ooh, I mean, that you know, that tripped me up a couple of weeks ago on a visualization. Um, and I went and asked for help from people. Um, so you know that's a challenge point for me. So I made sure to understand that. Um, understanding aggregations, yeah, I stressed out about that. Did not find that that was a big point of stress. Okay. So that is the kind of the study guide. Um, and that's what I remember as far as being on the test. Let me, let me check my notes here. So data connections are huge blends of relationships, connections. Oh, data interpreter. Didn't see that on there. Um, make sure you understand what data interpreter does. And again, if you're using it, you're going to get that muscle memory and you're going to understand it, but you can memorize the definition as well. What, what is data interpreter going to do? Um, what files can data interpreter work on? Saw that one. Logical and physical layers. Yes. Talked about that. Unions joins. Absolutely. And then, um, calculations. I found that that section was pretty light. I was a little nervous about that. Cause like I said, the, the levels of aggregation, I'm not, I don't feel super comfortable with yet. Um, calculated fields, syntax. There are some questions specifically like, Hey, what's the proper syntax to do this thing? So make sure you understand the syntax of the calculations. Um, yeah. And then levels of aggregation. Um, okay. So that is kind of the, uh, the quick and dirty of what's on the test. Yeah. Like I said, 45 questions. Um, I, I passed fairly comfortably was not excited about my score. I did get done in under half an hour. You have an hour for the test. I did not feel like it was at all necessary. There's no calculation. There's no practical application. There's, there's simply no way you can run out of time unless you just get up in your own head and you're like agonizing over questions. Don't do that. Okay. What is next? My performance. What is, what was on it? Um, how did I study? Okay. So I worked through, you can see my progress here. I'm about, uh, yeah, right about halfway through this course. So I did not complete this course. Why? I didn't need to check it out. Um, and let me collapse all of these. What did I feel like I needed to study? Um, installing Tableau, probably not, but I think I did those a long time ago. 
Preparing for the exam, you absolutely should go through this. Uh, some of it's not super duper necessary just because uh, that it's more geared towards the data analyst exam, but it's absolutely gonna talk to you about the exam and what's gonna be on it. That's a brief section. Connecting the data, I hammered this multiple times. Um, worked all the way through it. You have to, to kind of do this course because it's an end-to-end -end, um, building, you know, modifying data and then implementing it and making visualizations, building a project. But this, I definitely knew, hey, I've got to stress this because this is a big point of emphasis for the desktop. The desktop focuses on get your data in, clean up your data, prep it, start doing visualizations, get into a dashboard. Data analyst, I feel like, probably goes way more in depth, so you should probably know this stuff better. But connecting to data, definitely hit that hard. Field types and charts, went through it multiple times. Um, did, did all of the exercises, built out all of it. Mapping and analytics, zip. I will do it eventually, but is absolutely not required for this test. Calculations, I did most of it. Okay, I, you can see I went through and I kind of cherry picked some things, table calcs, level of detail. Level of detail was not stressed on this test. Um, so I kind of misallocated my time there, but you can see some of these like specifics on string functions, date functions, really not necessary. Going through calculated fields and aggregation um, and table calcs, that's, that's what you need. So I really went a bit economical there. Examining and filtering. I did not find that I needed that. Uh, dashboards and stories, I went and did just kind of intro to it. And really, if you know how to put a parameter or a filter on a dashboard, that was all I saw on there. So Tableau server, Tableau prep. The practice exams, the Maven course is wonderful. The practice exams, I did not find helpful. I did one, the, the, first of all, they combined Prac app and multiple choice. So I skipped all the prac app and just did the multiple choice. I did not find that the multiple choice were very similar to the questions on the exam at all. And so I went through one of those tests all the way through multiple choice, just kind of forced myself to finish it. And then I said, okay, I'm going to go find a practice test that's a little bit better. And I did. Um, I don't have that for you today. I can't remember where I found it. But yeah, so... Parts to, parts to focus on here if you do this Maven course, and this is what I, what I recommend. Prepping for the exam, connecting to data, field types and charts, do the kind of the first half of calculations and look at that. I would say do, if you do like the first couple of sections of examining and filtering dashboards and stories, that's probably plenty. Here's what I did once I kind of realized, hey, time's ticking away and I've got other responsibilities, you know, the daytime job doesn't go away when you're certifying. Um, let me, and let me actually kind of minimize that a little bit. Um, my biggest tip was once I got down to crunch time and it was Friday night and I was like, Hey, I'm taking this test tomorrow morning. It's time to whatever cramming I'm going to do. I got to do. I started listening to these videos and not doing any of the actual work, but just kind of watching a video, reading it on screen at double speed. So Dustin Cabral is, he enunciates, he, he speaks very kind of slowly and clearly, which is wonderful, but that means you can double the speed and kind of give the, the information in your brain housing group a refresh in, in a very rapid fashion. And I force myself to, hey, I'm not doing anything. I'm not making any more graphs. I'm not working through this. I am watching the videos of the things that I know are on the test. And, um, and I'm just, I'm just going to read his words on the screen and absorb as much as I can. Um, if you get yourself focused, if you kind of get yourself into a bit of a flow state, it's, I found it to be very effective. I retained quite a few of the things and, and remembered a lot of the things that from that refresh during the test. So I highly recommend that as a kind of as a best practice to, to do last minute prep. Okay, so that's how I studied. Number one tip, perform. Don't try to memorize. Get that muscle memory in your head. Make the graphs and you will remember. Work through, make some mistakes, correct your mistakes. Um, 
there were there were times when I would try to follow what Dustin was doing and I would screw something up and it wouldn't work and I'd go back and I'd work out what I had done wrong. That's the best way to learn. Make mistakes. Okay. Um, so those are my recommendations for you to prep for the test. There are other things. I did the 365 data science course. I did some other projects, you know, plenty of things you can do to prep for the test, but this one-stop shop, that Maven analytics course, which you can get from either from Maven's website or from Udemy, which is where I have it now. Cause I don't, I don't subscribe to Maven. Um, that's the best one-stop shop to prep for that. I would imagine it's probably the best one-stop shop for the data analyst test too, but we will, we'll burn that bridge as we cross it. All right, what do I need to do to improve? Um, I feel like there are shortfalls that I need to address in my Tableau game. I need to get better at just getting a set of instructions and being able to get to the finish line and, and work through that. I don't feel like I've got enough reps to do that. Um, I definitely, I did one of the 365 data science courses and then I went and did tried to do another project that was kind of unguided and I hit a lot of roadblocks and I got, I got frustrated pretty quickly and I sort of bailed on that. I ran short of time as well, but, uh, I was disappointed in that. And so I feel like that's kind of a shortfall in my game. I'm, I am not to the point where I can fill in gaps. I'm still, I still have big gaps in my learning. Um, so that's me, what I need to improve. I, I have things that I want to improve about my ultra learning method, about how I studied for this 30 day challenge. Definitely have way, things that I want to improve about my content, but I mean, look at me, I've got this, you know, janky Walmart lighting, you know, I've got a $6 uh, dollar general Santa hat on. It's just, it's, it's also amateurish, isn't it? Um, but maybe that's, you find that appealing. I don't know. Um, but that's, that's what I need to improve. I need, I need more reps with Tableau and I need to find a, a vehicle for that going forward. And I don't know if that's an e-learning platform that I should subscribe to. Um, I don't know if it's taking the, the work that I'm doing in Alteryx and taking data sets and, and putting them into Tableau and seeing different ways to do that. Who knows? Uh, we'll see. So that's what I need to improve. And then, um, what's next? Well, so we had this uh, kind of movement going, installed and got back going, installed and got back going a couple of times. There are some other people taking the test. I did the, in the last video, I, uh, you know, we spun the wheel of destiny and Ruby gonna won the, uh, the hundred dollars tonight. I paid up. She's going to take the test this coming week. Um, but tonight I did transfer a hundred dollars. Luckily I, I got a client for a resume the other day. So I'm like, Hey, I got the money to pay for. I mean, I'm not going paycheck to paycheck, but I was like, that's pretty cool that I got resume work. And then here's a hundred dollars to pay for this, uh, this thing I gave away. So my wife's not mad at me anyway. Um, so we will continue talking about Tableau Vember, about Ruby passing the test. There's another, um, Chris Kusha I know is going to take the test sometime soon. So that's exciting. Um, yeah. And then what's next? Um, we're deciding on the next 30 day challenge. I'm toying with the idea of doing one in February. There is obviously we're in December now. I'm not going to be able to get recocked and you know, new year's is just kind of a mess generally. And I'll have all sorts of other challenges and things going on. I'm, I'm thinking about February, maybe March by the time I can kind of get it cranked up again. Um, but we're thinking about a lot of different things. We're talking about power BI. Um, question with Power BI is what is the end goal? Because it's a tall order to do PL 300 in 30 days. So I've been told, which I take as a challenge, but we shall see. Um, but there's nothing kind of small and manageable like Alteryx core designer core shirt, like, uh, like Tableau desktop specialist that pertains to Power BI. So that's the challenge. We've talked about SQL. We've talked about Python. The additional challenge with those is there's no, again, there's not really an industry standard certificate for those. So I'm all ears on that. If somebody's got a kind of a proprietary or like an e-learning cert, a nano degree or something we should be shooting at, I, you know, I'm, I'm open to all options. 
the point here is to spend 30 days and, and burn hot learning something in an intense fashion. That's what I want to do. And I want to show people that these things are approachable. You can take a month and you can commit to a learning goal for that month. And it's manageable. Anybody can burn hot for 30 days. And that is, that is the goal, to learn something in a month. So certificate is wonderful realistically, but there needs to be some sort of actionable goal. So if we say learn SQL, well, learn SQL is not an actionable goal. It's not, it's not measurable. You're talking about smart goals, the M, measurable. What's measurable about I spent 30 days and now I know SQL gooder than I did before? That's, that's not a thing. Um, so I do like to have kind of a milestone goal to get to. So certifications tend to be very good for that. You, you know, nobody can take them away from you. That's it's great for your resume. So we'll talk about it. Um, I'm open to suggestions. We've got, you know, 45 days to kind of throw this clown show together and, uh, and get it cranked up again. If in fact we are starting in February, which is a big if. Okay. Well, um, as always, I'd love to hear what you all are doing. Um, it's my goal to, to kind of inspire people to, to, you know, go on their own learning journey. I really want people to, to learn all tricks. I want people to learn Tableau. I want people to, to develop themselves. And I think that's the moral of the story is we bring this 30 day challenge to a close. And as people are out there testing and, and developing themselves and, and building their skills, the point is this, it's all out there for you. Nobody is stopping you. We live in a day and age where the knowledge that you need to be wildly successful, to dominate the workspace is out there for you for free. Now it may not be well organized. It may not be presented to you in a fashion that you find is amenable to your learning, but it is there. And it is free for the most part. And that is mind blowing. It is a essentially a first in human history that all of the knowledge you need to have a lucrative and successful career is free to you. I'm talking, you don't need a college degree necessarily uh, for a lot of jobs. You don't need an expensive boot camp. You just need some discipline and perseverance. And so if I could, translate that to you, be, be disciplined, persevere, have a goal, be creative, be, think about it. Think of ways that you can pursue your goal. And if I can inspire people to do that, that's awesome. And, and I'm honored. So everybody, I urge you to get out there to study this, to get your Tableau desktop specialist certification. And if you do that, I'm going to be a happy man and uh, let me know about it. Tell me how you did it and what your experience was like. All right. Now I'm rambling and I don't like rambling. So I think all there is left to say is follow me, folks, and I'll make you a genuine Tableau hero just like me.